welcome to a very special interview that we'd like to do today. We would like to introduce our friend Jess Anderson. Hi. <laughs> so, Jess is here from New York and she's in the body positive community. And that is something that I think does not get enough awareness here in Taiwan. The body positive community is trying to empower people to eliminate shame and judgment from their relationships with their bodies. But when we talk about shame as it relates to bodies, we mean certain body types that you're supposed to feel ashamed of. It's something that you were born with, but you're having to feel like it's wrong. When I think about body positivity, it's how we think about our bodies, it's how we talk about our bodies, it's how we feel about our bodies, also the way the media talks about our bodies. One of the really big things the media likes to talk about is beauty. In the West, like in the United States, the idea of beauty is young and thin and white and able-bodied and cisgender. We don't have a lot of people of color represented in media um, as beautiful people. Even in media, when there are people of color represented, they tend to pick people who are mixes, who are like, I, I've heard that that's also a thing in Asia, like mm. people who are like whiter looking are seen as being more beautiful. And so that's something that people are trying to raise awareness about. A lot of my adolescent years were spent in the Asian entertainment culture. Right. And like it's definitely influenced me to the point where I'm still trying to find like what am I actually really comfortable with? Right about like 14, 15. 14, 15, mm -hmm. we did start kind of like venturing into enter entertainment. I remember like going into a meeting with an agency and them asking us like, how tall are you? And they're like, okay, so you should be like 90 pounds. She was like, oh, that's so cute. You guys want to be singers. But you're too fat. It, it, it was it was like our first taste of like the kind of warped mentality that mm -hmm. the entertainment industry and has. when everyone in the industry agrees to it and so that summer we dieted and we exercised ran, we, and, we did and lost a lot of weight and we were taking like diet pills i couldn't focus in class like i would think that the teacher was like writing in code and mm -hmm. i was just like oh my god i cannot do this mm -hmm. right then like our paths diverged mm -hmm. Starting off in the industry, I remember going to like a music video shooting with my agent at the time mm -hmm. and we were eating and So I was like eating the first half of the sandwich and then when I was finished with it I was gonna go for the second half yeah. and then my agent was like that's enough and I was like what? Yeah, and that's when I got this cue like if I can't be at the weight that they want me to be mm -hmm. and they see me eating That's even worse, right? So then I stopped eating in front of people and I would go home and start this, this cycle of like secret eating. You start to have an unnatural relationship with food, yeah. which is super, super dangerous. Like I went through like years and years of just being really, really sick mm -hmm. from my thyroid disorder. If you know anything about thyroids is that they, they affect your weight. In terms of like just pure weight, it could be like a 20 to 30 pound oscillation. As with anything, if you notice something happening again and again and you're aware, then you just realize like my weight is not me. It's like I will age, like my weight will go up or go down, like mm -hmm. your body will change mm -hmm. and like to accept that and just live in the present, I feel like that's, that's the key. I think a lot of it also is learning how much like trauma people have experienced with their bodies, especially related to weight and weight loss and eating disorders and putting on weight, that when we comment on people's weight, we don't really know what we're reinforcing. Especially if we learn to not value thinness so much in combination with understanding that we should be more sensitive when we talk to people about their bodies. There are someone in the States doing some work that I really, really like. Her name is Lillian Bustle. And she gives a really great talk where she starts off by saying, I'm 5'2", so I call myself short. I'm married, so I call myself a wife. And I'm over 200 pounds, so I call myself fat. She compares that to, you would never say to a tall person, oh, don't call yourself tall. Because in our culture, tall isn't a dirty word. And I really like that, like reclaiming of the word fat, because to be so sensitive around it implies that there's something wrong with it. It's like how you guys think of this word mm -hmm. that's causing it to be so ugly almost, right? right? You know, it's radical for me to love my body, but I'm young. 
thin, able-bodied, mm -hmm. cisgender. I'm all those things mm -hmm. that culture already thinks is beautiful. Is acceptable. Is beautiful. exactly. Yeah. But for someone who is not these things to say to step into beauty and to say I'm beautiful, that is really radical. These are the affirmation stickers. And these are sort of geared towards not being about beauty because I wanted to realize that I could relate on different levels with my body. I, it was actually in response to really bad subway ads and I was like, I really want stickers to put and on really these ads. And really bad mannequins, right? And really bad mannequins. Like this one. Yeah. Which is like, I mean, I shouldn't say it's a bad mannequin because possibly 2% of the population does have a body like this. Right, but yeah. this is like all we see. Can we yeah. put all these on our mannequin right now actually? I am free to have a body that is unique to me. I am cultivating a loving relationship with my body. I am thankful for all that my body does. The oh. uterus. Yeah, I was actually just going to say that. We didn't talk about periods at all. Ah. <laughs> periods are great. My body is a source of joy. Yay. Yeah, it was really, really great to be here. This is empowering for me to like get up and say things like this in front of people. The more that I learn about other people's stories, the more normal I feel. And I just want everybody to feel normal, ultimately, you know, to know we're like, none of us are alone in this. So I appreciate uh, that. Hi. We should hug the mannequin too. In the middle. Mannequin needs to